Let me guess. You're thinking, that's it? Did I miss the punchline? And you're right, boss. This world is a joke. And I need you to finish it. Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and this is The Magic Circle. This game is hard to describe. The Magic Circle is a first-person collect-a-thon slash sandbox exploration game. It is a game with an emphasis on storytelling that is, in itself, a meta-commentary on video game creation. It was released in 2016 for Windows, Linux, OS X, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One for $20. It was created by the indie studio Question. To even begin to explain the gameplay, I have to dive into the game's story. The writing and voice acting in this game blew me away. It is at the level, if not, better than a modern AAA game. The story begins with a cliche monologue from a god of this world, Starfather. This goes on for a bit, making the game seem artistic and deep. And then suddenly you hear Starfather say, Okay, I'm trying to record here, and you're making that face again. The player can skip this, right? Oh, yes. The story is only my life's work, but by all means, skip to the last page. Shall I leave it blank, so you have somewhere to doodle? Yeah, that's right. You're a playtester, experimenting on a game prototype before the big E4 event. You begin your quest, but it is fairly clear that the game has a lot of problems. These problems lead you to dying and becoming ghosted. Long spoiler-filled story cut short. An entity tells you that the game devs are incompetent, and you need to find a way to steal admin powers from them so you can finally finish the game. You set out to acquire allies and attributes that will help you reach this goal. The main way you acquire attributes is by using this colorful power to edit entities and bring back ghosted creatures and objects. Your power is noted by a limit bar you will need to refill often if you're editing a lot. Your main tool for editing creatures is to put down a magic circle underneath a creature. This will make it stop in its tracks and allow you to edit it freely. You can edit a fairly liberal amounts of information as well. You can change a creature's abilities, whether or not they are hostile to you or any other entity. Decide whether or not they have abilities like teleport, breathing fire, or flying. And you can even change their names if you want a truly personal experience with a certain creature. You use all of this to help with different gameplay scenarios, and this game is unlike any other I have ever played. It is a collectathon where the sandbox is a prototype build of a game. You traverse this world as a playtester, altering environments and creatures in order to solve puzzles and indirectly fight other creatures. The puzzles are done by swapping attributes of some creatures and controlling them. The impressive part is, for every puzzle there are a plethora of solutions. The idea that the game was an alpha made the game's art style extremely unique. It at times had a cel shaded feel when you're in the more medieval section, but when you go back to earlier builds of the game that are still attached into this alpha, you have a much more pixelated, almost 90s feel to the game. It's really interesting. And the music is okay? It's it, Once again, it's an alpha build, so I feel like they get away with a lot of things in it, because it feels like almost an unpolished feeling to it, and the music only kicks in at certain times, but nevertheless, it was not bad by any stretch of the means. On the same side of that coin, though, the music is in no way memorable. As for the collect-a-thon aspect of the game, when traversing the prototype, you will find a list of developer commentary on how the game was made. I need to clarify. Commentary from the pseudo game developers, the ones in the game rather than the ones in reality that actually made the magic circle that we have purchased. It's almost as if Question was trying everything in their power to make this review difficult. At any rate, you'll collect these pieces of commentary that are normally simple text documents or audio tracks. The audio commentary is normally from the three main developers of the team. It is these pieces of dialogue that fill in the blanks on why this game is in development hell. The text documents are numerous, and they can be found from any of the above mentioned characters, or they can just be from random workers at the company. These texts also help fill in the background story of the game. All these are normally hidden in places where you need to solve a puzzle to reach. The puzzles, and consequently the entirety of the gameplay, is the worst part of the game. Don't get me wrong, the Magic Circle's mechanics are not broken in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they are 
quite fun, and there's a plethora of creative ways you can solve any given puzzle. That's just it though. There are way too many ways for a gamer to approach an obstacle, making the puzzles laughably easy, especially towards the end of the game where you have a toolbox of powers you can use to your advantage. Sometimes I even solved a puzzle and thought, did I just break this game? Right about that time, my companion said something to the effects of, If it seems you've broken the rules of this world, don't worry. The developers made this world, so fuck them. You're just using the tools they gave you. The gameplay completely changes in the last eighth of the game, where you're basically given a level creator, and the more items you found in the sandbox segment of the game, the more assets you can put into your level creation. I thought this is the part of the game that really sucked, frankly as the rules were extremely vague and they lacked complexity and frankly character to make it a good segment of the game. Because of this, hell, I've never played the part more than once. To be fair though, the mechanics were original in both the sandbox and the last part of the game, so many of the critiques get put to the side as far as I'm concerned. Besides, the game as a whole is fun for the time you spend with it, it's just not very challenging. I have saved the best analysis slash critique for last. The Magic Circle's narrative is jaw-droppingly outstanding. Both its writing and its voice acting are on a level that few indie games ever reach. The narrative follows an Artur-level game developer and his personal plights about the game-making industry. Mostly, he's attempting to make a successful sequel to a text-based adventure he made that has a thriving fan community. In many ways, this game is trying so badly to communicate to gamers what it's like to be a game developer. The narrative of this game comments on stuff like the balancing of game and story, and it tries to communicate why many developers make games, or rather, the lies they tell themselves so they can continue to make games. In many ways, you'll find it hard at times deciding whether you're angry sad, or empathetic towards the lead director. The metaness in this game is a mechanism used so Question can sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you, developer to gamer. By this virtue alone, I cannot recommend The Magic Circle enough. I am so glad I played it. It's outstanding. This isn't a plight from a bunch of indie developers either complaining about the AAA gaming industry. Question is a company composed of veterans from the AAA gaming industry, most notably the writers from the original Bioshock. This shows in the monologue at the end of the game. It is magnificent. It is a heartfelt rant that forces the player not only to think about what they did in this game, but what they did in past games as well. Sounds kind of familiar if you ask me. The Magic Circle is a shining example of what can be uniquely achieved when you attempt art in video games. Even the gameplay aspects are solid, unique, and fun to play around in. The only negative to the game is that its puzzles are often too easy. That being said, the only person I believe shouldn't consider buying this game are those who don't like free roam sandbox adventure games. So if you're looking for a first-person sandbox exploration game, one with an emphasis on storytelling that is, in itself, a meta-commentary on video game creation, then The Magic Circle is the game for you. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in other sandbox adventure games, I have a review on another that is not nearly as serious. In fact, it's quite funny. It's called Jazz Punk. If you click on the annotation right there on the bottom left, you'll be able to go to it. If you want another game that's beautiful and also has much harder puzzles, much more fair and challenging I might want to add, you might want to check out my review on Lumino City right down here. It'll be in the middle. Also, I recently did a review on an indie game called Cave Story. It was a collab with the Henry Game Show and you should go over to his channel and check that video out. It's pretty good, the intro's a bit rough, but it's otherwise a great video. Rick always does a great job editing. So go check that out, and yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys later.
want to be where nobody